folks. So today we're going to be working on uh, version 2 K9 IFAC. So what we have here is we have a crazy tough uh, gear um, Vapor M2 harness. This is what Ank got for Christmas. So she uh, she likes this harness quite a bit, um, but there's a few things that I feel are missing. So we're gonna hook a girl up, and we're going to uh, build this out. So first things first, we'll get rid of this Velcro. So the platform that I'm using is a, a high-speed gear. Um, flat pack IFAC so this is uh, gonna sit right here on the back but we have to do some modifications to it as it's got molly laser cut molly on the back and we have a soft side velcro field here on the back of the harness so as you can see this is gonna work really good now the purpose of this canine IFAC is 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 two parts one the majority of the uh, gear that I'll be putting in this is going to be not only for canine use but for human use so if the handler is injured he or she could go ahead and start self-aid on themselves uh, as well as do do some first aid for the dog if both parties are injured so I'm gonna switch things up a little bit uh, you're going to see a few different types of tourniquets on this kit and then some of the stuff uh, some of the other things you're going to recognize as things that might be part of your own IFAC uh, kit so so first things first what we have to do is we have to convert this to velcro so we'll get this out of the way and I'll pull this carrier out um, and these carriers fold out like so this is a really nice kit um, the carrier itself is somewhat inexpensive I mean as far as as far as carriers go I mean you get what you pay for I mean you can go super cheap and get one for 29 or 30 bucks or you could get something like this that's gonna really be durable and and stand up so I'll set that over here and so now what we have to do is we have to convert this. Get some things out of my bag of tricks here. All right. So what I have is I have some mill spec velcro and I think I'm going to need some super sharp scissors for this so we only need the uh, hook side here so we'll get that out I'm going to make it just a hair smaller. Okay. Set that over there. Look at, I already got little fuzzies all over the stuff. It's crazy. I'm, I'm trying to get this done before the, the, the Velcro field is full of dog hair and everything else. So. So you might be asking yourself, why in the hell are you ruining a perfectly good uh, IFAC carrier for a dog? And well, the answer is, 
uh, one. I don't want it to be uh, mollied to the harness because then I can't, you know, rip it off and throw it out. You know, I want I want to uh, be able to pull the whole kit off of that. The other thing that I want is if for whatever reason she's going underneath a fence or something like that and gets hung up on it, I want this thing to be able to rip off on its own. We can go back and find it later. All right, so do I need to trim this a little bit more. I don't think so. I think we're going to goop it up pretty good. Not, you know, not as advertised. These look like uh, pretty good sized tubes on Amazon and then I get these things and they're freaking ridiculously small. So, we'll make do. Alright, so we'll just goop the shoe goo stuff on. This is ridiculous, this small amount of stuff here. tube down. I think this is going to be a two tube job. A little old X pattern here. Oop, got to pop a hole in it. Again, too, this kit is not going to be focused on boo-boos and things like that. It's going to be for uh, trauma-type injuries. So uh, I did make uh, another kit that I had given to a friend of mine years ago. And it pretty much had everything but the kitchen sink in it. And this is really not going to be that. So one of the things that I'm going to be trying to do, and I've got a ton of stuff to go in this kit, is I'm going to try to keep that as flat as possible so we can uh, you know not not get hung up on stuff so that's that's the primary objective here alright so here we go I'm not too worried about any coming out around the edges it'll be fine once it dries Alright, so this is the first step in doing this. So this is going to take me a couple of days to make this video, but the first step is, is done and we are going to uh, let this cure overnight and then we'll get back at it first thing tomorrow and we'll finish building out this kit. Okay folks. <clears throat> So, our shoe goo has completely cured, uh, and this is not coming off. I mean, this is this is rock solid. So, rock solid in the sense meaning that it's flexible, but it's not like gonna break apart the adhesion. Of course, my furnace has to kick on when I'm doing this video, but that's all right. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. Um, so, if I speak a little bit louder, that's why. So, so what are we going to put into our canine trauma first aid kit? So, 
our selection of gear has to be able to fit inside this sleeve and I mean that's a pretty pretty good amount of stuff but the problem we're going to have is working with vacuum sealed components so let's let's put this together um, some of this is just based on my own experience other stuff is from uh, different writings from the DOD about canine trauma first aid um, just basically lessons learned from military working dog units and engaged in combat operations that sort of thing uh, I don't do anything with drug dogs but if you're a drug dog handler you might want to have some kind of counteractive agents uh, you might want to also carry some activated charcoal uh, that sort of thing in order to counteract things like drug overdose uh, poisons that sort of thing so activated uh, charcoal is, is a good thing I mean people if they get sick and ingest something that's toxic using activated charcoal can help reduce the toxicity by the charcoal itself absorbing the toxins and passing it through the system so there's a few things that we're going to need in order to provide ourselves with some basic first aid tools uh, to handle some type of traumatic injury um, I mean you can you can think about the spectrum and so really when you're building something like this uh, you have to think about what your job is you know what what is the purpose of that dog is it a personal protection dog and may be subject to gunshot wounds or traumatic amputation by being hit by a vehicle or I mean just a bunch of different everyday scenarios that you could think of um, again if you're like a, a canine a police canine handler and you've got a drug dog um, your, your dog is going to be exposed to high doses of narcotics or other types of, of uh, illegal drugs you're probably going to want to have Narcan or some other counteractive agent like I just mentioned the, the activated charcoal and whatnot in this kit or readily available to you in case you're away from your patrol unit um, and all you have is what you're carrying a little goes a long way when you need to increase that golden hour time time frame animals are no different than humans uh, they can bleed out no differently than a human being can in fact they probably will bleed out a lot faster since they're smaller than we are uh, so got to keep these things in mind your golden hour might be your golden half hour with a dog it really depends on what happened to uh, the animal and whether or not you're in close proximity to an emergency vet clinic or some other type of emergency care that can stabilize the animal until you can get it to a uh, veterinary hospital that specializes with trauma injuries to, to dogs. So that was a lot, so I'm just going to slow down a little bit. So let's, let's put this together. Hopefully this is in frame and you guys can see it. Looks like it is. Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do it, and the absolute first thing is I want to make sure that I got a muzzle so this muzzle um, you can get this muzzle at Ray Allen now there's a lot of, of nylon muzzles that uh, will look similar to this however the components that come from Ray Allen are not your cheap Chinese knockoffs and quite frankly if you're dealing with a dog especially like a patrol dog that's trained to apprehend subjects uh, and to protect its owner in the case of a personal protection dog you're definitely going to want to control that mouth that's its primary weapon system and uh, if you've ever been uh, involved in any kind of canine training or actually have been on the, the receiving end of a dog bite you know that this this adjustable muzzle is worth its weight in gold 
I went with this instead of one specific to my dog, meaning it's not measured for her uh, specifically because I might be in a situation where I'm around other canine handlers and they need a muzzle. Here you go. You got a universal muzzle that'll fit most all of your working dog breeds. So this is probably the most critical piece of equipment to have in this canine trauma kit. The canine trauma first aid kit, TFAC if you want to call it that. That's what I'll be calling it, so uh, it's not for everyday cuts and scrapes, paw cuts, things like that. Um, it, this is just purely basically a stop the bleed type of kit for your, your canine. This is number one. Number two, hot days, you got to make sure that that dog can pant and, and expel heat. And so again, this universal muzzle is better than a constrictive muzzle where the dog can't pant or breathe very well and or drink. So you want to make sure <clears throat> that you have something that can ha actually benefit you rather than hinder you or increase the actual injury to the dog by not allowing it to expel heat or whatever the case may be. So this is this is the first thing. The second thing is you're going to want some kind of a card. Uh, if your dog is left with a emergency veterinary care and for whatever reason maybe you were injured too and you're off to the hospital, this is going to be everything that happened to that dog that you've marked off and you're going to want to make sure that everything that you could think of regarding the animal's injury, the type of dog, what the dog's use is for. So like if it's a drug dog and you don't mark down that it's a drug dog, they're not going to know to look for any kind of overdose situation or something like that. You want to put everything on here that you can. Any medications you might have given the dog, uh, some of these are not for civilian use, so you're probably not going to have access to these kind of drugs, but if you're LE or military, you probably will have access to these mark this stuff off and, and the dosage. Um, so yeah, so this has definitely got to go in to the kit. So we got that over here. You're going to want some kind of gauze pads. These are 4 by 4s um, I've got probably 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So half a dozen ought to be more than enough for this kit because we've got limited space, so that's going to be more than adequate in my opinion. You may want more in there. That's up to you. I mean, these things are really designed, or should be designed by the handler. This isn't something that you can go and buy. While well, you can go and buy a, a canine kit like this, most handlers would prefer to build these kits out themselves, so this is just what I'm doing. By no means I'm telling you that this is the de facto loadout. Uh, in any way, shape, or form, this is just what I'm doing. This is what I feel is best for me and my canine partner. Chest seal. This is controversial in a canine kit because of the fur. So if your intent is for this being used on a dog, you're probably going to need some way to shave the hair away from the, the, the wound in order to apply this. However, like I said in the, in the very beginning, maybe I just need to reiterate it, it's okay to put human stuff in here too. Meaning, maybe the canine handler has been shot and he's got a gunshot wound to the chest. Probably be pretty handy to have this on his partner, who's going to most likely be by his side. So, scrambling around and going, hey, anybody got a chest seal? Anybody got this or that? Right there in the canine first aid kit, which because of its Velcro nature, could be ripped off the back of the dog's harness and utilized for the handler too. So, I think I want this. Hydration salts, definitely must have, especially if you're working in the heat. Uh, dogs can be dehydrated no differently than human can. One for dog, one for you. Doggo's gotta have the uh, hydration salts no differently than the handler. Some type of hemostatic agent. This one is pretty uh, pretty thick. Uh, so this is gauze, right? So this is the, the the keto gauze. I don't know how you say that keto, whatever. 
but needless to say, it's basically another version of Quick Clot. Um, however, uh, this one here's got a substantial amount of uh, gauze in it. I believe this has, um, hold on a second here, let me find it. I want to say it's got four feet. Could be wrong here, looking on the packaging to see how much is on there. I could be wrong. I believe it's like four feet, which is a lot. It's a lot of gauze. So if you're packing wounds or doing doing that sort of thing, you definitely want that. All right, and then some type of ace bandage. I like these Velcro kind. Then you don't got to dink around with the little metal clips. These are great. Uh, especially if you've got to hold something in place on, a, on an animal or you're wrapping an amputated limb uh, as well to keep dirt and everything else out of it. You want, to, you want to be able to provide some wound care on scene to prepare that animal for transport to a veterinary hospital or to your own you know, medic, medic tent. Uh, it's not uncommon for, especially in military working dogs, it's not uncommon for injured canines to be brought into human medic facilities and those medics while they're not trained in canine veterinary care they they can and do have some training in wound management for these animals in hopes to stabilize them until they can get them to some type of veterinary emergency care within the military unit so not only that <clears throat> this is really good for just basically keeping things in place. Um, you know, these gauze bandages or, and whatnot. It's not to replace any type of compression bandage, um, but again, space is limited, so you're gonna have to make do if you're gonna use something like this. The other thing about this too is um, you, gotta, you gotta keep in mind, you can't have like a backpack on the dog if you're deploying the dog uh, with this setup, right? You want to keep it as minimal as possible while achieving all of your uh, modified march capabilities. So uh, you're not going to see things in here like chest darts and that sort of thing. However, for those of you that think throwing a 14 gauge needle into a dog is a good good thing to do, bad bad idea, especially if you're not trained in it, because the needle that comes standard with most IFAX 14 gauge needle quite long. Uh, dogs, dogs chest cavities aren't the same as humans. Distance there isn't really the same. So one inch catheter or maybe a half inch catheter is probably all you're going to need for some type of pneumothorax injury where you've got to get the air out of the chest cavity. Half inch or, or one inch uh, catheter is more than adequate. And you could probably carry a couple of those. but. Again, I'm not putting that in the video because, quite frankly, I think too many people focus on that. And more than likely, all these armchair medics are going to kill people before they help them because they watched a video on YouTube or whatever and they have no practical experience doing that. So I'm not going to put that in there. If you know, you know, and hopefully you're trained and you're not going to cause further injury to the animal or a person if you're using that stuff. The other thing too is like, um, you know, all these classes that people go to. Classes are fantastic and awesome, but what people fail to understand is going to a class in 2020 doesn't doesn't prepare you for the rest of your life, right? You, you kind of know. I mean, a lot of times people think that they go through one of these classes and they come out like an EMT, and you know they're 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 more than capable of doing it. That's a wrong answer. I mean. It takes repetitive action in order for any training to really stick and be utilized in a time of stress. And that's what's going to kick most people's asses is the fact that you could go through all the training that you want, but if you've not ever been under stress during that training, and I don't mean some jackass yelling in your ear to put your, your tourniquet on in, in 2.5 seconds. I'm not talking about that because that's artificial stress. I'm talking about actually seeing blood, watching you know a person bleed out and all those things that's real stress and it's horrifying 
and you're going to have to have a clear head in order to work through that trauma, you know, the traumatic situation in order to be effective, right? And yes, so training is great, but one class isn't going to do it for you. Multiple classes are going to ease you into that mindset. And of course, the old saying is, you're going to fight as you were trained. You're going to perform these actions as you were trained. So what I would recommend is if you're into this stuff and you really want to make a difference on, on a bad day for somebody or an animal, then you should probably take annual training, stay up on the latest techniques, and keep going through. So it's up to you. I mean, at the end of the day, trying to remember that class from five years ago is probably not going to be a good thing to be doing while somebody's bleeding out. you got to be able to act quickly and do it effectively in the right way in order to sustain life and prevent death. Just, just a public safety notice there. All right, <clears throat> so let's try to get this together. I'm thinking that I'm going to have problems with this because it's thick. And I don't have a lot of real estate here. So, Oh, did I mention the tape, duct tape? Duct tape's really good for canine injuries because it sticks good to the fur. But again, it's not going to be like sealing it off, but it's not coming off that fur without a fight. So if you need something held in place, maybe the tape is better than the ace bandage. So I think I would go with ace bandage stuff for like legs, and I go with tape for any type of body injury where you've got to put something down on the animal. All right, so think about that. Um, some of you might call me out on the amount of adhesive sticking on one of these hyphen vents. Well, that's true. That's true. Longer haired dogs though, like your long haired shepherds and things like that, are going to have a problem with this. But your shorter haired animals like uh, Dutch Shepherd and Belgian Malinois, this might actually work. But remember, the whole point of this is to create a seal. So, I mean, that's going to be kind of a hard thing to achieve with, with fur. Just know that. Some people put like a disposable razor in there, but time, time is your enemy in a situation like this. You're not going to be sitting there, you know, with the shaving cream and the, and the Bic razor uh, getting the, the wound all cleaned up. You've got to act and you have seconds to do so. So just remember that. Um, you know, humans usually, again, even with, even with dudes with, with hairy chests, Right, I mean, if your partner, if your buddy's like a Sasquatch, he's he's rocking the you know four inch hair on the back and four inch hair all over his chest and everything, and you rip open, you know, you pull that vest off, you rip open that uniform, and he's like a Sasquatch. This isn't probably going to work well for you. So again, got to keep these things in mind, be able to adapt and improvise. So you know, maybe talk them into some laser treatment or something before they go out on patrol. I don't know. I'm just saying. All right, so let's get this in here. All right, so this is going to go in first because I want it on the bottom. And that looks like it's going to fit nicely there. Next thing I want to do is let's put our T triple C card in for canine. Let's get that in there. And let's go ahead and put our hydration salts in. And let's do, uh, let's go with the gauze underneath the TCCC card. All right, <clears throat> so that looks like that's going to go quite nicely. So let's fold that over, fold that over. Everything seems to be pretty good. Doesn't seem too bad. All right, so now let's get this guy in here. Try to flatten it out a little bit. See if I can't get it as flat as possible. You know what, I might have another one that might be thinner. Let's see what I got for the other one. All right, here's my other one. And this is looking like it's not much better. So I think this is the thinner of the two. So we're gonna go with this one. So let's get all these edges folded over. What you don't wanna do, these are vacuum sealed. What you don't wanna do is break that seal for obvious reasons. Right. You're going to be shoving this into a wound cavity. You want it to be as sterile as you can get. It should be, it shouldn't be expired. I mean, it's, if, if you know about medical stuff, stuff like this, 
they they all come with expiration dates. As long as the as long as the the wrapping isn't compromised, you're gonna be just fine. So let's let's try to get that the way it is. Put that in here. I'm glad my furnace finally shut off. That's good. All right. So let's let's see how we're doing. So I think that's doable. That's pretty good. But we still have to get the muzzle in, and we have to get these components in as well. So let's get our muzzle put in. Uh, let's try... Alright, so this has, got, this has got glove pouch on this side, so let's, let's try to uh, get this over here on this side. Take this back off, put that in. We might be asking too much here, but we'll see. We'll see how it fits. Okay, that's good. All right, I think we're in good shape there. Now, so let's let's talk about tourniquets real quick. Um, so, two types that work on canines best. SWAT T, it's elastic, stretch, wrap, and tuck, right? Not not bad because uh, windless type don't do well on the canine limbs at all. And uh, it's really going to be pretty frustrating if you think you're going to whip your cat tourniquet out and put that on your canine's leg and everything is going to be groovy. It's not going to work for you. It's going to be bad. It's going to come undone. And you're going to have a problem. So SWAT T, if you can't, this is a um, TACMED canine tourniquet. And uh, so I'm going to run this on one side, this on the other. So for doggo and for handler. And I'm going to try to get a spare SWAT T in here just in case there's multiple limb wounds on the animal or the human. We've got ourselves a spare tourniquet. We're going to give this a try. Alright, so we need some gloves. Just want to get the gloves in there for right now. All this stuff takes up space, so let's uh, let's prep these. So let's go with two pairs. We'll do one pair per side. We can tuck them in here. You know what's interesting to me is that uh, these gloves, they don't they don't come in pairs sterilized. I think maybe surgical gloves might do that, but the bulk bulk gloves don't. So try to try to keep keep them as as nice as you can because you might have some issues with wound contamination if you're not getting good quality gloves. So all right, so we're we're quickly running out of real estate here. All right. So now, hopefully, we can get this guy in here, and maybe that guy there. If I have to choose between either one of these, I'm going to go with the tape. In fact. I think we're just going to do that. Yep. I think we're I think we're over extended on our kit here, but maybe not. I still think this is doable. I still think we can do it. So 
man. This is all about rigging, right? So let's pull this stuff back out. That's pretty flat. This seems this one seems thinner to me. Hold. Maybe do something like that. That looks pretty decent. And then uh Man, this is going to be tough. Don't know if we can do it. Maybe we can pull this off. Maybe put that in the middle. And do something like this, maybe? No. I think we're going to have to lose that. That's really unfortunate. But it is what it is. Space is a premium. So we'll go back to the original configuration. Put this over here. Like so. And uh, we'll tuck that in there and lock this in. Okay. Um, don't know that I need these. I think these are for like hanging uh, tape rolls and stuff. But maybe somebody else knows who has one of these. I think it's just for like accessories and things like that but we might be able to use these secure the tourniquets onto the side as well too I've got uh, looks like I put one here and looks like I got another one here that we can we can work on so all right let's get this back together here and see if we can't get this into the carrier all right so it does have field on it if you were uh, doing this for human probably would want to put some kind of like um, drug allergy tab on there maybe your blood type on there just so if somebody rips this off of you and trying to put put this on you know utilize this kit for you which is what it's designed for um, they kind of know those things so they know that you're a pos or your penicillin positive you know negative or whatever so you know you want to make sure you put in as much information as you can so let's let's just try to get this on there it's gonna be tight it's just a matter of working it all in I think we got it yep it looks like we do awesome Awesome, but sad because we we don't have that ace wrap in there. But it's it's fine. Boop. Pretty tight, as you can tell. Okay. We're a little bit off kilter here, so we're gonna try to move this around a little bit. But I think we're in good shape. And that's not too bad of a package either. Um, let's pull this over a little bit. Now the reason why I'm spending so much time packing this is because, you know, you want to keep as much dirt and stuff out of here. I mean, this is going on an animal. So they're, gonna, they're not going to be too too conscious about whether or not they're trauma kit is uh, dirt free and stuff like that so you might say well you know dogs don't care well the handlers do and if you're a handler you know exactly what I'm talking about alright <clears throat> so I think we're in good shape here I think this is going to work out just fine so let's get some, some uh, tourniquets looted on this bad boy so we're going to go with one for the handler. Pro tip, for those of you that don't, that don't know, never keep your tourniquet in the plastic wrapper. If you want to know why, go ahead and cover your hands in some carol syrup and try to get this out. Dip both your hands into some carol syrup and try to get this out and you're going to find out it's not going to be a fun time. 
and just imagine that that carol syrup is your blood and you're bleeding out and you're trying to do self-aid and you're screwing around with this plastic wrapper so I always take these out of the wrappers so you know you know the whole point of these things is to be ready to go in a, in a, in a second so make sure that you look at them make sure everything is good these are not the cheap uh, Chinese fakes these are legit North American rescue so this little tab down here seems to be something that would probably get in my way especially if it got hung up on my windlass clip so let's go ahead and put this in down here on the side And I know this video is probably pretty long and you're probably all bored and you're like, look, just just get on with it. I hear you, but some people find it interesting to do this stuff. And uh, I'm going to take the time. You're like, yeah, but when you go to rip this thing off, man, it's going to be all tangled up in that. Nope, it won't be. Trust me on that. So now what you do is you take this and you lift your windlass up. A little bit put it down so now when this comes out it's secured here on the side just exactly the way you want it and you're not going to have you're going to be able to pull that out and it won't be getting caught on that some people will do that some people write on the back of these just because remember sometimes you're not the person that's going to be uh, doing the first aid so they don't know if you put a little arrow like so that tells a person which way to pull so now if I look at that I know I pull it this way it comes right out okay so now we need uh, a tourniquet for Anka so we'll put that on here. We've got one spare in the uh, kit, so we're good there. So there's a total of three tourniquets on this kit. Some might say that's overkill, but you know what? She's got four legs, I've got two, and two arms. So, I mean, I think we're adequately covered here. Now these guys, I should probably do a video on how to use one of these. We'll see, we'll see what kind of response this gets. If I get enough comments asking me to do that, then I might sacrifice one of these and uh, do it so let's go with let's come up here like so and put that over here we'll get that you want to make sure this is tight too remember she's going to be going through or your 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 canine is going to be going through some stuff and it's going to get hung up on stuff you don't want your components falling off while you're trying to uh, track somebody or do something along those lines. So, right. so with this, what we want to do is first thing when you see these things on the end like that, just come around. All you need is just one little overhand type of deal. That's going to save you a lot of a lot of aggravation down the road because what happens is, is these little uh, push button clips people pull on them they come right off and then they're lost forever so we're going to press down on this and we're going to pull up on this as tight as we can on there it's not going anywhere so that's really good all right so now we've got two tourniquets on here we got the the arrow to say to pull this way we got our handles here so we can rip this off and uh, so that's it now there's some custom stuff going on here this is going to uh, have a canine med patch put here so we'll set this on here for now 
just to be that that way. Uh, one thing that I didn't put in there, it's going to be pretty hard to fill out a TCCC card if you don't have anything to write on. So let's go ahead and put this Sharpie in there. Pretty certain, just like everybody else is, that's probably going to get lost, but it's in there pretty tight. But it's there. So that's it. Um, let's go ahead and mount this. Give it a test. See how it functions. Alright, there we go. Want to make sure that's not going to fall off, right? Alright, good to go. Not coming off. Need it, need it off. Boom, nothing's coming off. Now if you wanted to, just a suggestion, uh, you could dummy cord this, but there's one more element that I'm going to put on here, I think it's going to really be helpful. So let me pull one out, and then this is going to this is going to serve a couple of purposes. Alright, so this is super helpful. Some of you might want to run this. Some of you might say, hey, that's stupid. Don't do that. That's up to you. For me, in my situation, I want it. So this is a night vision approved. IFF beacon. Now hopefully we're going to get out of the box here soon. And so let's go ahead and put that on. This has a uh, Velcro on the back side. Now I have several several different types of... Uh, I don't know why it's sticking in there. So I should do another video on this as well. Um, just kind of go over it. So this looks like the one that we're probably going to want to use. Put that on there. Alright, so now I have a way of, of, one, tracking her, two, if this gets ripped off or whatever, um, we can definitely do that. This has multiple different functions. Alright, so we've got blue flash, red solid. There's an IR function in here for night vision. I think I want green. If I can get it to green, we'll be good to go. I think I'll do a video, another video on this. We'll just... And a lot of you are going to be like, oh, well, so I saw that green thing coming through. I just shoot at the light. Well, that's, 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 that's your... That's your bad decision, in my opinion. Um, obviously, somebody's tracking you. They're not at nighttime. They're not going to be running a visible light. They'll be running an IR light. So, um, you know, that's that's part of part of the the mental preparedness thing, right? And a lot of people think that, but this is this is we're going to keep this on there, and that's going to be her IFF uh, beacon. And uh, yeah, so. I know this is a little bit uh, long-winded. I really would like to uh, thank you all for watching and hopefully joining the channel. If you, if you like this kind of stuff, then there'll be more of it. And I'm going to figure out this friggin' light here, so the next time I talk about it, I'll know what I'm talking about. But this one's acting a little bit different. We've got several other of these, so 
I'll have to see if maybe this the battery's not charged on it. And by the way, these things do a, a USB-C charge right directly onto it. I mean, you can charge it in your car. You can do other many ways to, to do that. So, pretty decent little setup. You can get it on uh, Amazon, Nightcore, NU06MI. So, it's got the IR, and that's what you want to pay attention to if you're rocking nine vi night vision. And it's got multiple different colors, so you could designate different colors for your teams at nighttime. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. I hope you... Uh, got something of value out of this uh, I know that I did I'm disappointed that I couldn't put all the things that I wanted to in there but I have to be realistic and this is going to cover my most, my most basic needs as far as trauma care goes in the field um, not to mention I could probably supplement things from my own medic pack uh, that I carry not my own IFAC but my medic pack to help support an injured canine in the field so be safe out there and I'll catch you on the next video